Welcome to the tour video for the Opus Projector 2024. Let's get right to it. I will create a new project. Change the device to A6. And here you can already see the first new feature. In the location that I can choose here, or I use my default location, there will now be a projector project file. Let me create the project to show you how it works. In the project properties, we now have two file paths. Here is the path to the project file in the location that I chose. And here is the project folder, the same project structure that we used to have until this version of the Opus projector in an internal location in the projector application folder. And the reason that we did that is that several customers had problems, exceptions, data loss when storing their projects in cloud storage stored or synchronized folders using Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive or whatever else cloud solution you have. Because in the project folder, there are several different project files and there were interferences between the projector and the cloud storage solution, both accessing the same files at the same time. Now there will only be one single file which minimizes the risk of an interference between those two programs. So you can put this project file in a location that is synchronized with the cloud storage and you should keep this one as an internal local drive where the projector is located on your hard drive. So what does this look like for an existing project? Let me open a project that I created in the latest 2023 projector. Loading and converting. And once it's finished, we can check out the project properties. And you can see that, again, we have two file paths here. The first one is the newly created projector file in the old location of the project folder. So this folder is the exact location where I loaded the original 2023 project. And that folder remains there. We are not touching that. But we have created this file and we have created the working directory for this project under this file path. So this is the location of my projector installation. And in backslash user dir backslash projects, the project folder is located. You can change this location in the menu tools options in the category projects. There are some new entries here. You can keep the default location of the working directory for projects, which I guess we usually would recommend. It will just use the aforementioned subfolder in the projector tool path, or you can choose a custom location anywhere on your hard drive if that in any way makes more sense for you. But please note the hint. It's very important that this file path is not on a network drive or on a cloud storage drive, because this would kind of make the whole thing useless and you would have the same problems that you might have had in older versions. So this folder should always be purely on a local hard drive without any synchronization, without any cloud storage connection or any other technology that would in any way interfere with the files when they are being changed by the Opus projector. Also, please note, whenever you open a project, the working directory with all the project content will be created in this folder. When the project is closed, this folder will not be deleted. This means that if you have, I don't know, like 20 projects and you open them and close them one after another, you will have 20 project folders in this location. If you have enough space, that is not a problem. That doesn't hurt anyone because when you open the project file again, the working directory folder will be deleted and created newly from the project file. But if you want, if you want to keep things clean or you have little hard drive space, you can clean up 
the working project folder here with this button. This will only delete projects you have not opened. So this one and this one will not be deleted from my working directory. This also means that if you have not opened a project, you should not put any new files or make any changes to files in that working directory of the project. So let's say I open this folder, close this project here, and then make some edits in a JavaScript file. These edits will be gone when I open the project file again, because the project file will be unpacked in this folder and it will override any manual changes that you have made after the project was closed. Once the project is closed, or let's say save last, of course, if you make changes to the project, then close the project without saving, those changes will not be saved as well because they are not saved in the project file and they will be lost. So if you don't save the project, your changes will be lost. Okay, that's really it for this topic. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a ticket to our support address or use the feedback possibility in the projector tool. Okay, what else? we have a new JavaScript engine. This code, as it is here, will not work with the new JavaScript engine. Instead, every command needs the prefix pclient and then pclient.print. So you can type pclient. Dot and then choose any of the commands that are available or just type whatever you want to type if you are using our internal functions. So this is not for all functions. This is not for normal JavaScript code, only for our internal functions that we have added to the JavaScript engine. I will make a separate video on this so that you know what you need to do and what you need to take care of. For the next new edition, I will open the welcome project and I will show you the device info page. Here you can see a couple of new values. First of all, while we always had the free and used RAM memory listed here on this page, now we have these values as variables. Before I used a little bit of trickery to extract it using a Linux command, but now we have free RAM, and we have total RAM. So this gives you a good overview of the RAM usage in your system. Additionally, we also have the CPU load in percent. And with this, you can show how busy your project is on the device. In fact, in the welcome project, I have added like a little widget, but it's really just the values put again here, small on the top right on most pages. And if you go on this device info page and tap this button, then these values will be shown on all pages and you can check out how much RAM and CPU is used on camera pages or whatever other pages you want to check in the welcome project. Also, we have numbers of power on cycles, power off cycles, and the so-called crash count, which is basically the difference between power on and power off cycles. So in an ideal world where the device is always being shut down regularly, power on and power off cycles will have the same value and crash count will be zero. However, I do it also on the developer table, of course. When I stop working in the evening, I don't disconnect the ignition and wait for the power management to shut down the device. I just unplug the power supply. And thus, I have created a crash because, as you hopefully know by now, our devices don't really like it if the power is just disconnected. The file system, the operating system, they don't care for that. It is as robust as it can be. So it's not guaranteed that something will happen but over time there can be data loss if you do that and to monitor it to maybe show the end user that even though he says he always uses ignition and never unplugs the battery you can monitor this now power on cycle is how often was the device turned on and power off is how often was it shut down in a regular way and the crash count is 
this minus this. So on the device that I usually use to test this project, I have like 500 something power ons and only 200 or so power off cycles. So understandably quite often I don't shut down my device as I should be, but this rule really only applies for devices in the field because I have no problem updating the OS on my device again and I have no problem with data loss because I don't have any important data on my devices. But that will be different with a device in the field. So always take care that your devices are shut down regularly and now monitor and check what the end user does. Okay, for the last new edition, I will open one of my scripts here. Doesn't really matter which one. Very simple, we now have find and replace in the JavaScript, which can make editing life or programming life a lot easier. There are a couple of options here. Everything is documented in detail in the online manual, so please have a look at that. And as always, have a lot of fun using this projector version and let us know what features you would like to see in a future version. And if you think, okay, that's nice, these new features, but it's not really that much, you might not be completely wrong. And the reason for that is the next projector version, the projector 2025, where we will add a lot of new great stuff that takes a lot of time. So the new features in this version are a little bit smaller in number than usually, but great things are about to happen. But I cannot really tell you anything about that, not even remotely. There is not the slightest chance that I can tell you anything of what is going to happen. Okay, if you got that, great. If not, no problem. Wait for next year and you will hear all about it in the next tour. And for now, I see you in the next video.